Welcome in everybody on this chilly, really chilly Thursday morning to the Rebel Report. My name is Michael Borky. Glad that you are here. Now, obviously, we are not live tonight. I am recording this because, guys, I am I'm a glutton for punishment. We, we talked about this a little bit, a tiny bit on Tuesday, but the Saints play tonight. It is the Sean Payton return game and also the Drew Brees Ring of Honor game at the same time. And... The Saints starting 11 in week one. Remember when they beat the crap out of the Panthers and they turned around a week later and beat the crap out of the Cowboys? Nine of the 11 starters on offense in week one are hurt. Nine of the 11 are hurt. And Kamara's going to play, but he's really, really, really banged up. So eight of the 11 starters on offense are gone. Chris Olave, out. Concussion. Rashid Shahid out. He's going to get knee surgery. Taysom Hill, out. He's been dealing with like a uh, pierced lung or something crazy like that. So he's out. And Spencer Rattler, a rookie quarterback, is going to be playing behind an offensive line missing three starters without his two best receivers and Taysom Hill. I mean, what? Well, like, I I'm starting to question why I'm missing the stream tonight to watch that. I am a glutton for punishment, I guess. I mean, I, like, I really hate myself. <laughs> I mean, that's the only explanation for why I'm choosing to record now and watch the Saints tonight, as opposed to just using this as an excuse to distract myself. But uh, it, here we are. The uh, theme of the day, by the way, the topic of the day is an article that came out this morning in The Athletic. Bruce Feldman uh, of the Athletic said, uh, aside from Florida State, by the way, that was the qualifier. Besides Florida State, who is the biggest disappointment of the season? And he said it was Ole Miss. And uh, frankly, I'm going to read the excerpt to you. Uh, you can't argue with a single point that uh, that Bruce Feldman made at all. So we'll talk about that. Also, basketball media day, media days yesterday. I'll get into that a little bit as well before we get into football. But I do want to, first of all, invite you to subscribe to the podcast wherever you get them. If you're not a subscriber already, you should be. Just search Rebel Report wherever you get them. If you're listening on the website or on YouTube, uh, please pull out your phone, your favorite podcast app, search Rebel Report, and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a second. Um, as football season's ending, uh, you're going to get, I'm just going to call it the OT. And it'll be quote unquote off topic stuff uh, that I've just got thoughts about that are not necessarily related to Old Miss. That'll be like just kind of extra content for you uh, right here on that feed. Because look, I mean, it's called the Rebel Report. This is an Old Miss podcast, but but I do think like once things start slowing down a little bit and other stuff is going on in the sports world, I want to talk about it with you guys. So uh, be on the lookout for that as well. So you want to subscribe because not all of that is going to end up on YouTube. So don't forget to subscribe. And this edition of the Rebel Report is presented by the Gregory Law Firm. DJ Gregory, the Gregory Law Firm, he's in Salt Hill, Mississippi, but he can service you anywhere in this great state. If you're a small business owner and you think down the road you might need legal advice or you need it today, here's the phone number, 662-397-9799. Also, personal injury, if you have been personally injured or you may even have like a contract dispute. That's the number. And if you don't need them today, that doesn't mean you won't need them down the road. If something happens to you, if you're a small business owner and you need legal advice or you get injured, you don't want to be stuck without knowing where to go. I will tell you where to go. DJ Gregory, the Gregory Law Firm, 662-397-9799. 662-397-9799. Don't delay. Call DJ today, the Gregory Law Firm, presenting the Rebel Report. So you had Basketball Media Day this week. And I debated whether or not to to play Chris Beard's uh, press conference for you guys. And I decided against it just because it's 16 minutes long. But I would encourage you to go watch it. Now, of course, there's some coach speak stuff in, in every press conference. But I really would encourage you uh, to, to watch it and listen to what Chris Beard had to say. He is very different. Very, very different than uh, a lot of coaches. Not just... You know, there's a contrast between him and Lane Kiffin, a pretty stark uh, difference but between the two. Not saying it's better or worse or Kiffin's better or worse. They're just very, uh, very different. But he's also very different from, you know, other basketball coaches. You watch other guys up on that podium at Media Days, and he is um, – he's not – he's not the salesman uh, that some of these guys are. He is more like – 
process oriented. He is very singularly focused on basketball. Like, for example, I actually played the interview for you guys on here, but if you missed it, um, hey, dad and I sat down with him uh, right before the football season began when we were doing the show in Oxford. And hey, dad asked him a question. And I think it's a fine question uh, about, you know, John Calipari being at Kentucky for so long. Now he's over at Arkansas. You know, what do you think about that move? Is that going to be weird for you coaching against him, but just in a different place? And Beard's response was like, I just, I don't have time in the day to concern myself with stuff like that. Like, I, I don't even think about that. I'll think about that when it's time to play him, but I'm just, I, I don't care at all that that's happening. Um, and the same thing happened in his press conference yesterday. It was, um, he was introduced by Greg Sankey. And the first question went to somebody uh, from, from Arkansas uh, that Chris Beard knew that he was going to ask about his time at Little Rock. He, he like he knew it was coming. So before the question was asked, he stopped the guy and was like, hey, look, uh, I had a great time at Little Rock. I, I loved being there. Amazing people. But I want you to ask me about the Ole Miss and, and my basketball team. Don't you know, I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about my team right now. And the guy still, of course, asked about Little Rock. He just completely ignored Chris Beard. But that's the that's the kind of guy he is. He is um, very process in like detail oriented and singularly focused. He's a very interesting guy. And I, you know, I've been able to interview him one on one once and, and you could feel that uh, about him, that he really only is focused on, OK, how can I win basketball games? Like every it's it's like every move or everything he says, it's how can I win basketball games? And he he gets it. And people talked about that last year. I'm certainly not the first person to say that, but um, it, it's he, he puts his quote unquote money where his mouth is, talks about you know, investing in culture and building culture and, and doing it from the ground up. Remember, Arkansas came after him and he turned them down. But it's little things like bringing his entire team in front of the band. They, they did that, I think, last week. So the band could meet the players and the players could see, like, hey, the band that is at every game, the people that, you know, they, they hype up the arena, right? The band is a big part of the atmosphere at, at college basketball games as well as, as football. But it's like, hey, you guys need to see that they put in work too, and they are part of, you know, basketball at Ole Miss. And also for the band, it's like, hey, you guys support these guys. Here they are. Come meet them. Uh, the basketball team was at the fraternity um, intramural championship game the other day. Uh, he, he spoke to uh, the, the student organization, like that, that kind of stuff. He's heavily involved in in all of that, and and that is a contrast uh, from what you get out of Lane Kiffin. Again, I'm not saying that one's good or bad or uh, whatever, but you're seeing when he talks about that, when he stands at the podium and talks about building culture from the ground up, it's little things like that, and especially in the in the portal era where he's got what six transfers on this team. If you're not like locked in and focused on basketball recruiting when you see them play for the first time here very soon, there's going to be a lot of names where you're going to wonder. Wait, who the heck is that? Like, I have no idea who this player is, uh, but their coach is actively working on getting them to buy into the not just the team that they're on, but the community that they're in. And when we talk about the volatility of the portal and players not being bought into the school and fans not being able to fall in love with the players, that that is not what's happening with Ole Miss basketball. That is not what's happening with Chris Beard. He is intentionally getting his players in front of the people that matter often. And that is a very cool thing. And it, that's just something that, you know, when he talks, when you watch his press conference, that uh, certainly stands out. Other things, uh, you know, he's a coach and he does coach speak stuff. He seems to really like his team. Uh, he talks about Matt Morrell differently than any other player. Uh, he absolutely loves Matt Morrell. Also, it seems like he really likes uh, what he's got at point guard with the doula as well. Uh, Old Miss's guard play should be really, really good. And it's a really experienced basketball team as well. But you can tell when he's talking about Matt, like it's different, right? There's very little coach speak when it comes to his praise and adoration for uh, for Matt Morrell, who, by the way, second team uh, all SEC. He said that if they had won more games down the stretch last year, he'd be a first team all SEC guy. But the player himself, he said, is a top five player in the league. And um, Matt's poised for a big season. 
uh, says um, Bull is the only like NBA body big that they have. Now he said the other ones that they've added have a chance to you know be pros and and be really good players and stuff like that. But I found that interesting that he's like when you're talking about the the size on the block that he's really only got one player that's got that NBA true body type uh, on this team. And I think that if they're going to reach their ceiling, that they need to get some minutes out of him, even if he's not going to be a regular starter. Also, uh, Mark Adams. I think Mark Adams, it flew under the radar. They just kind of hired him, and he was working for a few weeks before people like kind of realized publicly that he was there. And I know there's you know, some controversy involved in that. But uh, the, the addition of Mark Adams is, I think, going to be huge for this basketball team. They are um, – they expect to be better physically, better defensively, a tougher basketball team. And having a guy like that um, on the staff is is a big deal, and it's going to be a uh, a big deal. It flew under the radar, but that's, that's a big addition for this staff. So um, I'm excited uh, about this basketball season. I think that uh, they're going to be fun to watch. I think that they have the chance to be a tournament team. I mean, they are one of nine SEC teams ranked. Uh, the, they were right there in the order of finish as well. I mean, Mississippi State was not ranked, and they were picked behind Ole Miss, and that should be a really good Mississippi State team. So um, th this league is deep. This league is really talented. This league will also allow you to have some margin for error. You know, you don't have to win 16 or whatever conference games to make the tournament. So uh, th there's a lot of good resume opportunities, and, and this Ole Miss team should be right in the mix to make the tournament. And, um, yeah, it's that they are they are building something there with uh, with basketball. Again, I would encourage you to, to watch the press conference yourself, but that season's coming up fast. And uh, looking forward to, to talking about that with you guys throughout it. So we'll get to the football part of this, what you guys actually came for after I tell you the podcast is brought to you in part by Advantage Business Systems. Check them out online at absms.com. Advantage Business Systems has you covered for all of your office technology needs. Tell them I sent you. You'll get a complimentary office technology assessment. So you tell them what you need and what your budget is, and they will find a solution for you on me. That's Advantage Business Systems absms.com. The podcast is also brought to you in part by Priority One Bank. They make you their priority every single day with their online banking platform. It's a one-stop shop. All you need is an internet connection and you can do whatever it is that you need to do with your money because Priority One Bank makes you their priority. All right, this morning, Bruce Feldman in The Athletic labeled Ole Miss the biggest disappointment of the season besides... Florida State, because that's the obvious one. Here is what Bruce Feldman said about Ole Miss. Quote, the Rebels were the trendy pick in the preseason to make the college football playoff. They still have a shot, but need to win out, and that includes knocking off Georgia. The offense looked terrific against mediocre competition, but once Ole Miss got into SEC play, it looked very suspect. The Rebels averaged 670 yards in four non-conference games, but just 414 in three games against SEC teams. A very experienced offense has converted on just 34% of third downs, 14th best in league play. Lane Kiffin's got a big rep as an offensive mind, but his team got shut down at home by 15.5 point underdog Kentucky, which has lost its other three SEC games, and then managed just 26 points with no touchdowns after halftime in overtime against LSU and in overtime against LSU. One of the worst defenses in the SEC. In their three SEC games, Ole Miss has managed only one touchdown combined after halftime. Uh, that is a very sobering and entirely factual assessment of the team to this point. Now, we've talked about already, they are two plays away from being undefeated, but there were dozens of opportunities to make those two plays, and they were unable to do so. At this point, Bruce Feldman's exactly right. Ole Miss is a massive disappointment. This is a team that, frankly, should be sitting at the bye week undefeated. But they're not. They should be. But they're not. And what is baffling to, to me and to all of you and to everybody, uh, we'll put the Bentley conversation aside today because we've, you know, we've beaten that dead horse uh, enough. But that component of what has gone on is baffling. It is inexplicable to this point. But it's very surprising that they are failing this bad 
offensively. And we've said for three weeks now, if anybody can fix offensive issues, it is Lane Kiffin, but it has not happened to, to this point yet. It just hadn't happened yet. Um, I know that they have issues up front on the offensive line. Uh, I am not smart enough to break down a scheme for you, but I do think that there are things that they can do to help alleviate some of the issues on the offensive line, um, not just limited to making some changes, as Lane Kiffin alluded to. Um, but the season to this point has been, it's been a failure. They have woefully and dramatically underachieved. I am hesitating to go full on in, uh, all in uh, on Kiffin and the staff and the program uh, just because there still is that opportunity for them to run the table. Uh, do I think they will? No, I don't. But that opportunity still presents itself. I, I mean, what happens if they do make a couple of adjustments on offense and the defense continues to to play at the level in which they've played? I mean, they absolutely can, and I think they're going to beat Oklahoma. Arkansas is improved, but with this front six from Ole Miss, um, I think Arkansas is going to have a hard time scoring. And that's certainly a winnable game. And Georgia looks completely and totally entirely human. By the time you play Florida, will they have quit? Uh, Mississippi State's improving, but defensively, they're the worst defense in the SEC uh, to, to this point. And I think that will continue. Personnel's lacking terribly. So that opportunity presents itself. They are talented enough to do just that. Um, I, I listened to... Ben Garrett's podcast recently, and I think he did a really good job of just kind of dressing down the entire program. I found myself just kind of nodding uh, along uh, with, with a lot of what he said. Um, I'm not ready to to go there just yet, uh, simply because the opportunity is still in front of them uh, to this point. And they, they have, it, it's not like they've gotten blown out in their two losses. They have done things to themselves that have contributed to those two losses, a lot of which can be cleaned up. Um, this is, though, it's gut check time for Lane Kiffin. It's prove it time for Lane Kiffin. It's prove it time for Jackson Dart, who's got to be much better. It's prove it time for Juice Wells and a lot of guys on that offense. But to this point, they have been a massive, massive disappointment. Um, one of the biggest in all of college football. But I am not ready yet to tell you that the season's over, that they are, you know, it, it's all a failure, blow it all up. They're going to the Vegas Bowl, all that stuff. Um, but Bruce Feldman saying what he said is is valid. The criticism that fans are levying on the coach and the program are, are absolutely valid. Um, the things like the, the dunking the basketball on the sidelines and the tweeting Gator pictures and stuff is cute when you're winning. But when you're not, th things need to get buckled down and get serious because um, they absolutely can still achieve their goals. But when you're losing and you're goofing off doing so, you're going to get things written about you like what Bruce wrote about them today uh, in The Athletic. He's spot on. He's absolutely spot on. So, sorry, uh, we're not live tonight. Please leave a comment, though. I, I would love to read them. I will read them uh, while I'm trying to distract myself from the Saints tonight. So, hopefully, uh, I, I get to, to hear from you guys. And uh, we'll be back live, as usual, on Sunday night. You'll have a great weekend. Kick back. Try to enjoy the football. And uh, we'll talk live again on Sunday night. See you then.